Someone Sanders is a former Joe Biden mouthpiece and had this to say about the prospect of any debate with Marianne Williamson or RFK Jr. Let's watch. I really think that uh, the mealy mouth Democrats, as I like to call them, and some of my progressive friends who would like to live in a fantasy land, they need to come back to reality. And the reality is this. The sitting president of the United States of America is a Democrat, a Democrat that would like to run for reelection so much so that he has declared a reelection campaign. In that case, the Democratic National Committee will not facilitate a primary process. There will be no debate stage for Bobby Kennedy, Marianne Williamson, or anyone else so we're going to have another Bobby Kennedy in an empty chair in the debate, right? There will be no debate. <laughs> yeah, no debate. The Democratic yeah. National Committee administers the debates, and they're not going to set up a primary process for debates to for someone to challenge the head of the Democratic Party. So there she is saying the quiet part out loud, way out loud. The Democratic Party has no obligation to be Democratic in the least. Of course, we knew this already. Those of us from the Bernie bro world, which I should remind everybody, Simone Sanders used to be in the Bernie bro world back in 2016 in my former position as National Press Secretary. But after 2016, DNC lawyers argued in court that the DNC has the right to pick candidates in back rooms. It it, it, it argued that, it, it won its case, and now they're just saying out loud that they owe the American people absolutely nothing, even as the Democratic Party stands to front, once again, as they did in 2016, a historically unpopular candidate. There will be no debate. <laughs> Bow be down no before debate. the king. I mean, it's giving, I don't want to make too much of this, but it's giving, like, are we the bad guys energy, <laughs> right? How can you, and, and fine, maybe they're perfectly legally within their rights to to uh, to shorten this process so that it's just a coronation for President Joe Biden. Fine. I don't know. I don't know how they can then pretend to be the one, you know, the guardians of democracy, the vanguard of democracy, people who are totally, utterly uninterested in a debate with candidates who are performing well, the candidates, yes. you know, who are getting some significant poll numbers, not candidates who are like like half a percent, you know, and it's like, okay, is it, is there's no real movement at all behind them, and it's not really fair to waste anyone's time. Yeah. Fine, I would understand. Yeah. But no, that's not the situation we're in. Yeah, and also, they tend to do this thing, she alluded to it here, where they weaponize the idea that a a candidate, an incumbent candidate who was challenged, historically goes on to lose the general election, even if they win the primary, and that for that reason, you know, George McGovern is evoked, for that reason, you can never allow there to be a primary challenge. It's utterly untrue. What it ignores is the extent to which those candidates got the primary challenge because they were historically weak candidates in the first instance. Right, and, and you have to, right, you'd have to, uh, they're talking about like 1968, right. et cetera, but. Uh, the Clinton-Obama showdown was a bruising cage match to the very end, and it made Barack Obama a stronger candidate, probably. Yes. And then he went on to win the election somewhat decisively. Yes. So you can't make the, sorry in more recent history than the 1960s, right. you had uh, you had primary battles um, on the Republican side. Trump had to fight off 15 people, some of them not very serious, but he had to fight off Ted Cruz and John Kasich. And well, the argument that would be made in both of those cases is that they didn't have the incumbency already, right. and that the counterexample the is that in 2020, you know, it, it, that, that I mean, sure. that maybe he was bruised by having you know challengers into I don't know, like, but the, their their argument would be that it's different in incumbency. I think that one, we have too few examples to really be able to make that case, and two, at a certain point. Your candidate is so weak. We just saw these polls. We talked about them yesterday, where Biden, Biden is down seven points against Donald Trump. Now, obviously, things change. We're, we've got a long way to the finish line, and Trump is not yet the nominee. But in that context, not to even be open to the possibility of what the party broadly has to offer, and to the extent that people like um, uh, Simone Sanders are saying, you have to get back to reality. There's no serious challenger. These aren't serious candidates. And, then, and that the relative outsider status and marginal stat- status of Marion Williamson and RFK Jr. are being used to justify the Democratic Party's mm-hmm. choice to ignore a primary race. That in and of itself is a construction. The Democratic Party has obviously told various other more mainstream candidates that they should sit out. And the reason why you're only having more marginal, quote unquote, French candidates in the race is precisely because the establishment has such a control over the establishment. They're the ones who decide who's who's a legitimate 
Right. Candidate. So, they're the ones yeah. deciding that. So they're, they're, <laughs> they're setting the stage. They are designing a context where they can make the argument that there is not a legitimate field so we don't have to have a primary because they have constructed the non-primary to begin with. It's deeply disingenuous. And I think a lot of voters, I mean, I, I just did an interview with Ben, um, ben Norton, uh, a journalist that's um, based in uh, Nicaragua. And he was making the, the, the case that some the majority of Americans, of course, identify as independent. I believe it's only 25 percent uh, that identify as de Democrats, 25% as voters that, that identify as Republicans at this point. People aren't interested in these kind of party politics. It's why Donald Trump was appealing to folks as an outsider. It's why Bernie Sanders, an independent senator from Vermont, was so appealing to voters. And it's why people like RFK Jr., who was running very much as a Democrat on the Kennedy name and legacy, but taking a very adversarial position to the Democratic Party, is 20% in the polls. Why Marion Williamson, who has been a consummate outsider, who's never had you know a, a position, a role in government, and who has been very trenchant in her critique of corporate uh, crony capitalism and um, uh, the 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 swampiness of the swamp has been getting, what, 9% in the polls as well. Oh, absolutely. I think we got another clip from Simone Sanders that you wanted to play. Absolutely. Let's roll it. And y'all can say whatever y'all want on background to the New York Times or any other paper. People can whisper all they want in the political playbook. Y'all know how this works, okay? If the sitting, if the city, the sitting president is a Democrat, the de facto, the head of the Democratic Party, okay? If the sitting president, who is a Democrat, would like to run for re-election, that's y'all nominee, honey. Ain't no... The DNC is not creating a, no. somebody, a process for somebody to primate the president. No, no. And so instead of people uh, playing in this fantasy land, like a, a Democratic primary and like Joe Biden, the reality is if the man wants to run for president, he is going to be the Democratic nominee. That's well, the reality. Yeah, that's, buck up, kids. You know, I mean, it's the reality because they're, hope, they're helping to they're, make they're it be the reality. reality. <laughs> we have such a toxic politics where the party apparatus is being deployed to protect principles as opposed to protect the party's principles. If we had a more parliamentary system where the figurehead was less of the issue and more of the party's agenda was what was driving politics, if the priority was who can we put forward who is actually going to win and actually going to protect the interests of the constituents that we say that we're fighting for, then we would perhaps have a Democratic Party that was willing to look internally and say, is Joe Biden the best representative here? But instead, it's it's her turn politics, where the Clintons have paid their dues and the Clintons are going to get what they're going to get, where people like Neera Tannen get shouted down for their OMB appointments, like the way they were after Joe Biden was first elected. But she played her role, and so they were just waiting in the wings to bring her back on board mm -hmm. into the advisory position she's being slotted in now to take over from uh, Susan Rice. Over and over and over again, it's pay for, for play. And absolutely none of the interests of the American people are being acknowledged in any part of this political process. It's disgusting. There will be no debate. That's yeah. what they said. Yeah. All right, that does it for us for today. But before we go, uh, we did want to mention um, Glenn Greenwald, a friend of the show, yeah. uh, someone who's been on here many times, who's really an inspiration to us, great journalist. Uh, some really sad news in his family. He lost um, his husband, David Miranda, who's a Brazilian political figure. Very tragic, and we just wanted to wish him and his family all the best. Uh, and we sh I'm sure you at home are wishing the same. So yeah, just absolutely. wanted to note that. Such a tragedy. Um, I believe he passed away just a day before his 38th birthday. He had been in, in the hospital uh, for months now experiencing uh, prolonged illness. And it really is such a tragedy. Our, our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. Mm. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.